Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. This video will be focusing on the fuel system of the Turban. In that process, I'm actually going to rip out a lot of parts from the engine bay just to get a better, just to get some more space to work on. That's one thing. And another thing is I would actually like to clean up the engine bay a little bit. So I'm going to take a lot of stuff off in this video that has nothing to do with what I'm going to do in this video. But the main thing I'm going to remove for this video is the fuel tank, actually the fuel valve. I think I'm going to take the entire tank out just to check how uh, the metal is behind that. But um, I'm going to rebuild the fuel valve. Then I'm going to remove the carburetor and also rebuild that. Stuff seems to work on this car. But what does not seem to work is I don't think the fuel is running to the cup by itself before there is some kind of vacuum. That could be because of the needle valve in the cup. It could also be the fuel valve. Something is wrong, that's for sure. When it runs, it runs pretty well. So just to be sure, I'm going to clean everything up and rebuild it. And, and then it should be good to go. So I'm going to get started removing a lot of the parts from the engine bay. And um, I think it's about time to change that. <laughs> I also removed the carp down there and a lot of other small stuff. Then I noticed, unfortunately, this. It's not a big problem, but um, I think the thread has been destroyed at one point and uh, a helicoil kind of thing has been put in. I don't think that is supposed to be like that, but I could be wrong. The other one is not like that. It's just a small one. Maybe the seat is actually the same. I'm unsure. I don't think so, but it doesn't matter as long as it's tight. Then it's all right. So I'm going to go ahead at one point and try to clean this engine bay a bit more because I think it could end up being a pretty, pretty engine bay actually. At least I need to sort everything. And there are some electrical problems in this car that I need to figure out. And one way to do that is is to take a look at all the wires, of course. So that's where we are at today. I'm not gonna continue working on this today, but this video will most likely just continue. But I will rebuild this, the tiny, tiny carburetor, and this, the fuel valve. And uh, I got the rebuild kits right here. I hope I ordered the right ones, we'll see. Um, yeah, so that is gonna be nice. But before that, I will clean them up so I don't get grit everywhere, and then uh, take you back. So let's start rebuilding stuff for the uh, on the fuel system on, of the turban. To begin with, I'm going to try to rebuild this, the uh, fuel valve. This is to shut off the fuel when the car is not in use and then to turn it on 
And then when you run out of gas, then you have a last chance to get to the gas station by putting it on reserve. I could miss, it could be uh, another way around, but I don't know. Either way, that's a pretty clever thing because the Trabant does not have a fuel gauge. So it's nice to know when you run out of fuel that you can turn it and then you have maybe a liter or two, maybe, I don't know. But let's try to rebuild it. And to do that, I will start by taking it all apart. There's some crap in here, so we're going to clean that out. Then there is a little gasket. I need a little pick to take stuff off with. This gasket is not... I don't think anything is wrong with it, but we're going to change it anyway for a new one. <laughs> it's interesting to see that the thread on this plastic ball goes all the way to the bottom. Either way, that's one off. Then this filter goes off. Yeah, it's not filtering much anyway, anymore at least. Then there is this pickup tube that I think is just pressed into the hole like that. Ah, like that. And then let's remove those two small screws right here. Yeah, as you can see this Valve opens, when I turn it, I can open up for uh, two ports. One port is for, uh, for the outlet and the other one goes to closed, reserve or open. Here we have the rubber and as you can see it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's deteriorated. There is passageway between here and here, I can see, and maybe even from here to here. So even though it's closed off, which is up in this position, it would still leak fuel, which could lead to uh, to overflowing on the cap. So, uh, and using some brake cleaner, cap cleaner could be used as well. I'm just gonna clean the, the passageways. And we can actually see it now because the round hole have the tube in it like this. So when I open up for this outlet on it, then it will only suck fuel until this level, until this level. So when it runs out of fuel at that height, I can change to the reserve, which is there. And then, then I can go for a while again. So first up is to fit that rubber. Next up, let's fit the little filter in the bottom. Then we need to fit this rubber gasket at the bottom end. It is plastic though, so the thread is a bit touchy. I really like to fix stuff like this rather than to just buy a new valve because this will be Pretty much as good as new now. And there's no reason to always just change parts. Maybe if you were a mechanic working at a shop, this could not, this wasn't, wouldn't be cost effective because it takes a while and buying a new part and putting that on doesn't take a lot of time. So, but from a environmental point of view, it would be a a lot better if we started to fix stuff rather than just changing. Of course, environmental talk and Traband doesn't really fit together that good. I know. That's that done. Ta-da! So let's try to do pretty much the same with the carp. Remember, the carp was working, so I'm not going to do a whole lot of deep cleaning on this. I'm not gonna soak it in a ultrasonic cleaner or anything like that because it is working. You just have an issue where fuel doesn't really seem to reach the engine before the engine is running and I'm pretty sure that it was the fuel valve that was the problem and not the carb. But anyway I'm gonna rebuild this just to make sure that everything is nice. Here we 
go, the float. <clears throat> Once again, a really nice part. The one in the rebuild kit is made of plastic. I think I'm going to end up reusing this because I like this a lot more than the plastic one. As long as it's airtight, this is also possible to repair if it's not because you could solder it. I like that more than a plastic one actually. The gasket itself was all right, but we're gonna change it. So maybe it's a good idea to just keep track of these because they can fit in either port, but um, they're different sizes. So uh, I'm just gonna clean the ports out now. So now I have cleaned everything out and checked all passages for uh, for not being clocked. That can be done with, with fishing wires if you are unsure if it's unclocked yet. I still would like to just squirt something into this. Ooh, that was nice. This was the long one that goes into here, like that. And as stated, I'm not gonna put the new plastic one in. I'm gonna use the old one because I like it more. But this needle valve I would like to change though. This seems good. And a new gasket on this one. I'm gonna continue on putting the rest of the stuff back on the carp. So the carp is now back together. I do realize that I have not rebuilt everything on this carp, but remember it is working. And um, in reality, the most important bit for me was to clean it out and check that all the, the nozzles and jets were unclucked. So new gaskets and so on is nice, but uh, it wasn't really needed, to be honest. The fuel valve, on the other hand, that needed to be rebuilt, that's for sure. Let's get this back on the car. I was actually not planning on doing that, but uh, I can't wait to see if it can start on its own and also check if it's leak free. So uh, let's do that. But before fitting the tank, I would like to remove all this crap in here. Let me just show you the condition in here because this is a place that I would expect it to be completely rotten. Uh, but it looks to be in very good condition. Yes, there's surface rust, but it's only surface rust. I'm going to throw some uh, converter on it to just stop it in, to just stop it from continuing. But I'm surprised to see that it doesn't seem to be welded in there. So it, maybe it's original. I'm going to refit the fuel tank and put the cap back on. And then we'll start try to start it up. I'm not going to fit the cowling uh, or, the, uh, or the jacket around the engine, so we are not going to run it for long because the cooling, because the cooling will not be working really. Um, but I won't fit all that stuff yet because I would like to do some more work on the engine and some more cleaning before um, fitting that. So be back in a minute. And now the carp is back at its resting position. I fitted a new fuel line. Also, the uh, the valve up there is installed again, and the fuel tank itself. Unfortunately, the strap that holds it on on this side snapped when I tried to put it on. So I need to make a new or find a new one of those. But now, but what could be interesting now is to see if it actually works. A bit of choke, like that. Let's try. <laughs> That's a good, good thing about two-stroke engines. It doesn't really care if you give it full throttle from the get-go because it doesn't need to heat up like a four-stroke engine. But um, there's no reason to start on full throttle. Let's try again. Woo. 
sounding nice. I'm gonna switch it off again because I have no cooling at the moment, but cooling at the moment, but still it's running nice. Wonderful smoke, still no leaks. That's the fuel system sorted on the turbine. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.